Today, I'm going to build three starter house designs to help you spice up your builds in the desert biome. Greetings friends, Chaos here. Y'all seem to really enjoy my last video where I showed you guys three starter house designs using materials found only in the forest, and there were a lot of comments requesting me to do more of these for different biomes. I think it sounds like a fun challenge. So today I'm gonna to be showing you three starter houses for the desert using materials only found in that biome. Since these are starter houses, that means I will only use materials found at the start of the game without killing any bosses or purchasing anything from NPCs, and I won't be using any paint. But before we jump into the video, if you're looking to purchase any of Terraria's official merch, Relogic and 86 have reached out to me to give me an affiliate link. For any of their merch that you want to order, use my link below and you will not only help support Terraria and Relogic, but you'll help support me and this channel as well. And if you've been following their merch, they recently restocked their very popular Zenith keychain, or you could pick up my favorite, the Destroyer t-shirt. A huge thank you to everyone who helped support Terraria, Relogic, and myself by checking out the merch with the link below. Just like the previous video, we will be starting this one with a smaller basic house using only materials craftable from the inventory or workbenches. The second house will be a larger underground version with any materials crafted from all of the available crafting stations from the desert. And the final house will be one that uses all of the available materials, no matter how rare or difficult they are to achieve, as long as they come from the desert. Last time I restricted myself to gathering materials only on the surface layer of the world because there really isn't an underground forest biome in Terraria, but for the desert there is absolutely an underground version of it, so I will be allowing myself to access any of the materials found as long as I'm standing within the underground desert. I say it this way for one main reason. The desert is obviously one of the biggest sources of sand in the game, and sand makes glass. But ironically, stone isn't really found throughout most of the desert, so crafting a furnace to make the glass becomes a bit of an issue. And this leads me to the technicality. The edge of the desert has easy access to stone, dirt, clay, and silt that you could reach without ever leaving the desert. If I include these materials, the list of what we can build with increases massively. If I don't, the list is extraordinarily tiny, because without a furnace, I can't even make sandstone brick or smooth sandstone. For that reason alone, I'm going to allow me to use materials that I can easily reach without leaving the desert, which will be dirt, clay, silt, and stone, as well as anything I can craft with them. Now, it's quite common for deserts to have an oasis, which will come with palm trees, giving us access to palm wood. A ton of crafting recipes in Terraria can use any type of wood, so that means we're going to have a lot of the same materials for today's build that we had in the forest biome. In fact, every one of these chests has building materials from the forest biome video that will be usable today as well. But what about new materials? Obviously, we have all of the versions of sand and the blocks and walls that they make. Don't forget that we could still create a graveyard biome by dying seven times and collecting the tombstones, and that will give us access to not only the natural versions of sand walls, but it'll give us a few fun items like rolling cactus, antlion eggs, and placeable life crystals. Some of the materials that were more on the rare side in the previous video are common now, such as cobweb and gold. With the help of an extractinator and desert fossil, both of which should be relatively easy to find in the underground desert, we have access to all of the gems, a bunch of coins, and we can even add silver, tungsten, gold, and platinum, as well as sturdy fossil to our materials list. And of course, everything that they can craft. For today, we will have four full furniture sets to craft with. Palm wood, cactus, sandstone, and glass. 
On the more rare side of things, your world may have a pyramid if you can find it. They're usually buried underground, but it's far from guaranteed, so the banners that we can get from it will end up in the rarity chest, along with all of the other banners from desert enemies. Food is somewhat rare this time around as well, because shaking palm trees in an oasis does not drop food like they would in the beach, unless those palm trees are crimson or corruption variants. That means if you want access to poo block, you will either have to find banana splits from killing any of the antlion types, or nachos from killing angry tumblers during a sandstorm. Underground desert cabins will give us access to a lot of furniture items, but the biggest impact will be access to all of the 14 desert paintings, as well as giving us potential access to every statue in the game outside of the ones that you would find in the jungle temple. Of course, getting the exact paintings or statues that you want will be a bit more difficult, but if you aren't after anything specific, pictures and statues are easily found in abundance here. This is the full range of building materials that are available from the surface desert, underground desert, and grabbing what you can reach from the edges of the underground desert. So now it's time to look at our first build. But first, I just quickly wanted to let you all know that there won't be any videos on my channel for a couple of weeks. If you've been watching my live streams, those will also need to take a week or two off in December, if not more. I'm currently in the process of moving out of my apartment, and I need to spend the next couple of weeks focusing entirely on packing, cleaning, and getting set up in the new location. Then when I get set up at my relative's place where I will be staying for about a year before moving across the country, I'll be able to return to weekly content and things might even pick up even more than weekly. If you'd like to help the channel keep its algorithm standing during this two week break, be sure to leave a like and comment on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you. Now for the first simple house design, I'm going to be making an adobe style house. This will essentially take the shoebox house and enhance it to make it a bit more interesting for this starter house. These can also easily be stacked or expanded and still look great. As usual, I'm starting on the ground floor with the false foundation, due to the extreme limits of the first house where I'm only using items that can be crafted from the inventory or a workbench, I'm going to make the floor out of palm wood. I make the terrain a little bit more interesting by adding patches of dirt and hardened sand. If you don't want cactus to grow or desert enemies to spawn, you could go so far as to replace all of the surface layer sand in your desert with hardened sand as none of the enemies can spawn on it and cactus cannot grow on it. But I'm just going to do spots of it here and there because I'm not too worried about it. For the foundation of the house, I fill in the area with cracked dirt wall as we get a graveyard biome without breaking any of the crafting rules. For the adobe structure itself, I'm going to be primarily using hardened sand. This has a similar texture to sand block, but it has the added benefit of not falling with gravity. Typically, I would usually blend sand and hardened sand blocks together for added texture throughout the building and then paint all of them brown or orange, but since I'm not working with paint for the starter house and the two sands would stand out too much unpainted, I'll save that for a future video. Now it's time for some more palm wood, which will be used to enhance the foundation using palm wood wall and fences and the wooden support beams that are traditionally seen poking out of the sides of the adobe houses will be palm wood block. Again, I would normally use a different material in a more advanced building video, but for now, palm wood works just fine. We don't have echo coding at this point in the game, so when it comes to making windows within the house, there are going to be gaps in the walls rather than invisible walls. This means we are severely limited to how big the windows can be. In order to make a valid NPC house or a house that you can use a bed in, the gap in the wall cannot be any larger than four tiles in size. So all of the windows in this build are going to be two by two tiles, which actually works quite well for the Adobe style. Palm wood wall and platforms make up the support beams along the ceiling of the rooms while palm wood fences are used for support beams in the background wall, particularly right next to the windows as it can visually widen them slightly. 
Instead of a stairwell, I decided to make a rope ladder to help give access to the top floor. Furniture, as always, is going to be dependent on what you're doing with your builds. They could be storage, NPC houses, decorative, or a combination of any of them. So as always, I'm just going to throw together an example of what you can do, not what you have to do. And I'm going to make two valid NPC rooms. The furniture in use is sandstone, which we can't really craft using a workbench because we don't have access to a furnace to give us smooth sandstone block. But thankfully, you can actually find a lot of the sandstone furniture already crafted within the desert cabins found underground. But even if you didn't find enough furniture for this build, it would look just as good to replace all of this furniture with palm wood. And with that, we have a very basic starter house that looks quite nice using materials either found or crafted from the inventory or a workbench. This example has two valid rooms, but you could easily stack this style of house on top of each other to give you as much or as little space as you need for your base. So for the next two houses, we'll be using any of the available crafting materials found within the desert. That leads us to the second, larger, underground build. I did consider building this house like I did with the last video inside of a hill but made out of sandstone to make a desert theme, similar to what I did with the forest biome, but then I came across a pyramid in my example world and thought it would be a lot more fun to just make a large house as a pyramid instead since this house will be both above and underground and working with free falling sand is a pain in the butt i'm just going to dig out a massive area under the surface where i will lay out the underground structure and then i will fill in any gaps with sand later i went with sandstone slab for the surface blocks of the pyramid because personally i like the larger brick design I do use some sandstone brick in this build that will be blended in with the slab in various places, such as the floors of each room. I wish that there was a sandstone accent slab like we have with the stone slab, as I would use that for added detail throughout this build, but unfortunately that isn't a thing. To make the rooms more interesting in shape, I add extra blocks into the corners and I slope them. Then the top of the pyramid is capped off with gold brick. With all of the floors of the pyramid mapped out, all of the excess areas are filled in with sand or sandstone brick. For the background walls, the majority of the pyramid is going to use sandstone brick wall, as there isn't a sandstone slab wall for whatever reason. These walls are also used to line the outside entrance to make the overhang a little bit more detailed. Palmwood fence sits behind the tall gates which function as the doors for this build. I use gold bricks and stone slabs on the background walls next to the floor for added detail with a line of stone slab along the ceiling. To bring even more interest to the walls, rows of sandstone columns act as support beams with wooden beams lining the space where a ladder will be placed to give us access to each of the floors. I was about to start working on the furniture at this point when I had a fun idea to put a bit of a crumbling wall and a small antlion cave intersecting it. This will serve no other purpose than to just add more interest to the build. The cave is made using sandstone blocks, so there aren't any issues with gravity, and because sandstone has a better shape overall for caves than hardened sand or sandwood. Some of the areas of the cave have hardened sand and sand on them, just to vary the texture of the area a little bit, and then it was time to move on to the decorations. Starting from the top to the bottom, this pyramid will have a throne room, entryway, bedroom, treasure room, and the antlion cave. The throne room is very straightforward, just throw in a couple of thrones, a painting, and some statues. The workbenches will make it a valid NPC house. For the entryway, I wouldn't typically get access to bookcases at this point because we wouldn't necessarily have books, but sandstone bookcases can be found in underground desert cabins, so if you get lucky, grabbing one or two of these shouldn't be too much of an issue. 
The rest of the pyramid uses sandstone furniture with bast statues and the hieroglyphic paintings, as well as mannequins with armor sets that you could find within the desert. Gold is easy enough to find in the underground desert, either through chests or the extractinator, so having piles of gold coins throughout this build should be simple enough. The antlion cave uses cobwebs as well as antlion eggs and rolling cacti, both of which can be crafted at a graveyard biome. And that brings us to the completed pyramid base. I'm rather happy with how this turned out in design, though I wish we had a more interesting naturally generated pyramid to look at. This type of base is easily expandable underground and can be rearranged to fit any orientation that you need for your base. I just suggest having the rooms fit in within a general pyramid shape even when underground so that you don't lose the feel of a pyramid. And to make your rooms a little bit more interesting like I have here, you can offset your rooms from level to level to keep from having a boring repeating pattern. The last two builds were more ancient in design, so for this one I'm going to jump forward in time and make a cliffside modern house. I'm also going to be utilizing the oasis in a weird way for this one, so let's hop straight into it, starting off with building the cliff. You might not want a cliff for your starter house, and this is completely optional, so feel free to leave it out of your own design, as it does make traversing the area more of a pain in the butt. This build, like everything in this video, is just meant to give you ideas on what you can do with your own starter houses, should you want to, not to tell you exactly what has to be done. So take any of the suggestions or styles that you like and leave out what you don't. Either way, once the cliff is done, I can run over to my oasis and use a bunch of empty buckets to drain it. You can easily move water downwards in Terraria simply by digging, upwards, not so easy. Thankfully, we have access to an abundance of iron and lead in the underground desert, so making buckets for liquid relocation is very easy. Why am I doing this? Well, let's swing back over to the cliff and find out. Firstly, the house gets a false foundation, as I tend to do, using stone slab and stone accent slab, with palm wood in the area where the interior floor will be. Now the back end of the house, I'm going to be building a raised overhanging swimming pool using some stone accent slab, gray stucco, and glass block with glass wall in the background for it. Glass platforms will make these stairs leading into the pool, which of course is filled using the water we just drained from the oasis. We're not quite done with the rest of the water that we got yet, but hold on to that thought for a little while because up next is the overall structure for this house. This build will only have two levels, with the top floor sharing the same level with the swimming pool. Both of the floors will use stone accent slab and palm wood for the bottoms. For the side walls, the bottom floor is going to use gray stucco, while the top floor is going to use smooth sandstone slab just to vary the texture, and we will have a large window made out of glass block to fit the modern theme. The roof is just a flat area using lead brick. In terms of background walls, the top floor is made using yellow stucco primarily with a line of palm wood and a couple of lines of sandstone brick for accents, and several tall windows with one large window connecting to the side glass blocks. The stairwell will be primarily palm wood wall with two large thin windows going all the way up and a column of palm wood fence down the middle for a glass spiral staircase. Again, sandstone brick adds accents to the floor and the ceiling. The final room on the first floor is made mostly using gray stucco with a line of stone slab near the floor. At this point, I decided there was too much gray stucco in the house, so I swapped to using some gray brick wall in the foundation as well as next to the pool. Lastly, I made guardrails near the pool and the patio beneath the pool using glass wall with posts made out of palm wood fence. Before moving on to decoration and furniture, I noticed that the back end of the house had a lot of interest with the pool and the cliff, so I wanted to give the front of the house a little bit more love. 
Firstly, I'm going to dig a pit underground and dump in the rest of the water that we got from the oasis into it. Behind the water, I use a bunch of hardened sand wall. This water will be completely hidden in darkness once I place the blocks back above it, but it has one huge function as it's going to allow oasis plants to grow in the front yard in any spot that I have normal sand. I throw down a few acorns to grow palm trees, and I speed up time to wait for trees and grass to grow. If you're not using journey mode and you can't speed up time in this fashion, you could always just wait for the plants to grow while you're out exploring, or you could speed things up by sleeping in a bed. If you've killed Skeletron, you could make fertilizer to help your palm trees grow faster, but since this is a starter house, I'll let them grow naturally. Any grass or plants that I don't like, I simply break them with a pickaxe and wait for new ones to grow in. Once I'm happy with the front yard, I add more of the glass fence that we have near the pool and the patio just behind the front yard's plants. Then all that's left is furniture. This particular house is going to favor form over function and it's not going to be the most efficient base as it doesn't really have any storage but it's a completely valid and functional NPC house, and of course, given the materials we use, it's still a starter house. If you want to do something similar in design, but you want to make it more functional, I would recommend adding a basement level for storage with a whole bunch of chests. The majority of the furniture in this house is going to be from the glass set, because it feels more modern than the cactus, sandstone, or palm wood sets do. I wanted to have a collection of fossils, so I grabbed the prehistory preserved painting, which you should be able to find in the underground desert. The bottom floor is mostly a lounge and dining area in this example, while the top floor is a bedroom. The patio beneath the pool has two glass sofas, and the area to the right of the pool gets a picnic bench, though personally I'd love to add some sun chairs here. I've only ever seen them in mods. Speaking of mods, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me start doing some build videos and build tips with some modded content. And with that, the final cliffside modern desert starter house is complete. I'm really happy with the overall design of it, and I hope you all are too. So today we have the starter adobe house with basic materials, the large pyramid base, and the fancy modern desert house. I hope I've given you some ideas on how you could build some good looking starter desert houses of your own. Let me know in the comments which of the three were your favorite and which biome you'd like to see me do starter houses in next. A huge thank you to my biggest supporters for the month. Hi pick 3, Sarcasm Not Intended, and vault Rep 77 And be sure to check out my channel artist, Mythical Water, linked in the description below. Thank you all very much for watching. Be back in a couple of weeks with a new video.